Hey, welcome to my channel, Brad Wardle, call sign Captain Wingnut, from 7,000 feet in the U high in the Uinta Mountains of eastern Utah, Cougar Ridge Ranch. Today, I'm going to teach you how to kill carpenter bees and protect your wood. These carpenter bees drill half-inch holes in your in your very good wood in your decks in your swing sets in your porches i'm going to teach you how to kill them and i'm going to teach you how to treat your wood so that it will kill them if they even take a bite of it if they even lick it it'll kill them here we go be right back Thankfully, we don't have carpenter bees here at the ranch, but my kids in Ohio do have carpenter bees. Everything that they have gets chewed up, holes, I mean, just Swiss cheese. So they've been complaining and asking me for help on what to do, and I've had tons of requests from, from you, my viewers, asking what to do. So I put together a protocol, and I sent it to my kids, and I said, here, do this, film this, follow this protocol. I knew it was going to work but they weren't quite sure. Let me tell you what, it saved their lives last year. So I wanna share this with you. Uh, watch to the end, there's a few things that you're gonna wanna do to really rid yourself of these pests. And uh, well, here's Allie and Brad telling you how it worked for them. We did what my dad said and we sprayed all the carpenter bees and we didn't have a problem with them for the whole rest of the season. And this summer we're prepared to spray again if they come back because it was so nice being able to be outside, not getting buzzed by carpenter bees. And our daughter was actually able to play on the swing set without freaking out. Before I forget, don't forget to subscribe and click the notify button so that you know when I release new videos. If you've determined that carpenter bees are just being too destructive to your property and that they've got to go, I'm here to help you kill them all. To really know how to kill them all, you really need to know a little bit about your enemy. Blindly and unwittingly trying abstract things is not the way to get rid of a pest this prolific and destructive. Knowing your enemy is half the battle. So let me show you what they look like. For those of you that don't know what a carpenter bee looks like and might not be familiar with the damage, let me show you what they look like. The difference between a bumblebee and a carpenter bee, being that they're both about the same size, can be very similar in color, and they both eat flower pollen and nectar, is that the bumblebees have total body hair and build their nests in the ground, while carpenter bees are nearly hairless or have nearly hairless abdomens and build their nests in wood. Compared to the six-week lifespan of a honeybee worker, a carpenter bee's lifespan can be almost a year. However, by the time the newly hatched bees emerge, their parents are already dead. Newly minted carpenter bees emerge in late August and September, forage for a while, then hibernate through the winter. In the spring, about April and May, the survivors of winter emerge and the female bees look for wood to bore into to make a nest chamber. She will use new wood or clean out and expand old existing chambers. She prefers weathered, unpainted, softer woods like redwood, cedar, cypress, and pine. Stained wood offer little resistance to attack, while pressure-treated wood and painted wood are less susceptible to becoming a target. In a pinch, the female carpenter bee will take on stained wood over painted wood, and if space is tight, they many times will take on painted wood as well. If you have any of this soft wood on your house, patio, deck, porch, roof, or even lawn furniture, it can be a target of attack by carpenter bees. If you live in or have a log cabin, your entire house may be a smorgasbord for these voracious destructive pests. A female carpenter bee chews an almost perfectly round half-inch diameter hole just the size of her body into her preferred wood for a nest chamber. Her nest chamber can be six inches or longer into the wood. Some tunneling is actually scary to see just how deep they go and how much destruction they cause that you don't see. The males don't bore and don't sting, but will hover nearby where females are boring their chambers, waiting to chase down a flying female to mate. After mating, she will lay six to eight eggs, one at a time, from the back of her tunnel to the front, sealing each egg in a chamber of its own. She'll pack it with pollen mixed with nectar for food for the larvae. Then she'll seal it in and lay the next egg and make a chamber for it. When she's done with her six to eight eggs, she'll seal the end of the last chamber, fly a few feet away, 
and start over, making a new nest chamber in another part of your porch. This cycle continues from April or May until the adult bees die mid-summer, usually in July. The eggs left behind will hatch in about a week and the larvae will grow into carpenter bees over the next three months. As the young bees grow, they can continue where their mother left off, excavating and enlarging their space. When they finally emerge, usually in August and September, they'll forage for a while and get ready to hibernate through the winter. The young adults will hibernate in tree crevices, old nest tunnels and chambers, until spring when they emerge as full breeding adults and the destruction cycle will continue. Some people think that making a sacrificial wood area for their pests will save their property from destruction and do it in hopes not to kill the bees. But the downfall here is that you're just letting the population get larger and larger. And since they're really not your friends, they will eventually turn on you and go after your swing sets, porches, houses, sheds, barns, cabins, and patio furniture, and any softwood in the neighborhood. If you want peace, from these wood weakening, wood destroying pests, you've got to stop the cycle. So how do you stop the cycle? You're going to have to replace all of your softwood with hardwood or use an insecticide. And it's so easy once you know what to do. You don't have to pay expensive exterminator fees. You can do it yourself and here's how. My preferred insecticide, and by the way my favorite, is pyrethrins or permethrin. It is extremely toxic to insects on contact and non-toxic to all mammals. I put a link to my video killing airborne insects indoors and out in the top right corner and in the description. This will help you understand the phenomenal and more importantly natural insecticide that you'll be using and why it is so effective. I also have another video showing how this killer works for crawling pests as well. Here's the link in the corner for that. Now, if you have a lot of wood to protect, I encourage you to use a pump sprayer and mix a large quantity of the permethrin liquid. Okay, let's get started killing these pests. Spray the diluted and mixed permethrin in holes that are under construction to kill the females that are inside. One shot will do it. This stuff is deadly on contact. So don't worry if she doesn't come right out. This takes a little longer to work on larger insects, but it is deadly on contact, so they will die. Be careful as the females can and will sting if you grab them, or if they're ticked off, and this can tick them off. This will also soak into the wood inside the chamber and kill any insect or larvae that it touches. Now, drill out the already sealed or under construction tunnels and chambers as deeply as you can without causing more damage to your wood. Just make sure no eggs are left behind if you can. That's a big if. You could also use a wire or a rod to poke around and dig out as much as possible. Note, many times the female bores about a one inch straight in hole, then turns 90 degrees and bores six to eight inches more. In this case, you won't be able to bore the channel out with a drill, so do what you can and then soak what you can in the permethrin mix. It will soak in and it will kill. Many times, just letting the mixture soak into the wood will kill the larvae inside, but it will be there to kill them as they crawl over it to emerge in the fall. If you have too much destruction, just spray everything inside and out. If the larvae touch any wood that it has soaked up, they'll die within moments of contact. Make sure you spray all of the wood surfaces, even if you don't see damage. It may be just below the surface. Spray inside the holes and out and let it dry. If a carpenter bee lands on it, let alone bites it, it will die in short order. When the permethrin is dried, fill the holes and tunnels with wood filler as deep as you can. Permethrin concentrate is a water-soluble oil, so you can mix it in water or oil. That means you could mix a little of this concentrate in your paint, oil-based or water-based, and make the finished paint deadly. You can even put a little in your wood putty and make it deadly too. Now, spray all the filled holes with permethrin again and let it dry, and then paint if you desire. Notice this painted wood. The paint has failed and the carpenter bees have taken advantage of it. The permethrin can have a residual kill for up to 90 days, but I would suggest that you apply it once a month or more often if you have rain and sprinklers. Remember that female carpenter bees prefer weathered and unpainted wood, so if you can paint or shellac your wood after treating it, you will have a better chance of keeping them away. Paint hides the scent of the weathered wood below. She can bite through the paint, not a problem, but she'd prefer not to if the other non-painted wood is available. In August and September, watch your wood surfaces again 
as that is when the emergence occurs. If you see new holes in your wood, they're exit holes, and you should treat them, seal them, and paint them as well. If you did a good job of spraying the inside of each hole with permethrin, you shouldn't see any exit holes, as any bees that were left behind will have already died. But if you do notice any holes, spray, fill, and spray them again. Any newly minted bee returning to crawl into its tunnel for winter will die soon after touching your treated wood. Another proactive thing that I recommend is to set out carpenter bee traps while the females are drilling holes. You can find a link to the stuff I buy in the description. I suggest putting a half inch of water with five drops of liquid dish soap in the bottom of the catch jar. Carpenter bees can't fly straight up out of the bottle and the water and soap will drown them quickly. You can also make your own carpenter bee attractant by putting one tablespoon of sugar, one teaspoon of vinegar in two tablespoons of water and put that in the bottom of the catch bottle. As in my other video, there's a link at the top, killing wise wasps, hornets, and yellow jackets, you don't need to put any boric acid in this sugar water because carpenter bees don't socially feed each other. So that method doesn't work here. Sorry. Each carpenter bee looking for the sugar nectar in the bottom of the catch jar will die there, can't get out, and wouldn't feed another bee if she had to. Honeybees and mason bees are repulsed by the vinegar, but carpenter bees are not, so they go looking for the sweet treat. I'll put this recipe in the description below. Once you've caught a carpenter bee in your trap jar, leave it in the trap jar, because dead or alive it gives off a pheromone that will be an even bigger attractant, even over the sugar water to other carpenter bees. So there you have it. I hope this helps. Uh, it, it, this is tremendous damage that they do. And I hope this helps you get control of them and protect your wood. Brad Wardle, call sign Captain Wingnut from Cougar Ridge Ranch, high in the Uinta Mountains of eastern Utah, we're 7,000 feet up where the air is thin. Yeah, that can affect your brain. <laughs> so long. Thanks for watching.